All right. So in the last example, we saw that uh, you know this cross product formula. It's a little bit unwieldy. It's hard to remember. It's it's even a little bit hard to apply. You have to think very carefully about how then all the numbers sort of fit in, right? Um, those are the three components of the cross product in this case. Um, but um, if you've uh, if you've done a bit of little linear algebra already, um, like uh, a lot of let's say the University of Lethbridge students have, then you might notice these kind of you know like doing multiplying this way and then multiplying that way um, might remind you of uh, doing a two by two determinant. Uh, and in fact, it's not entirely a coincidence. There are connections that are, are they're hard to see within this course, but um, we can call this sort of a determinant trick, if you like. Um, and this is just a, a way of remembering the cross product more than anything. Okay. Um, so remember that we, we have these sort of standard unit vectors. All right? and these are sometimes called the standard basis because every vector can be written in terms of them. Like so. And what we do is we, we write the following. So for V and W, same as we, we've been using, um, V cross W, what we're going to do is we're going to write down what is essentially a 3 by 3 determinant. And if you've never seen a determinant before, don't worry. You can always go back to just using that formula there if you decide that you prefer it. Um, but I think with a little bit of practice, you'll get the hang of doing it this way. Um, now, this, of course, it's, it's not quite right to call this a determinant because the, the first row here consists of vectors. And a determinant, you should have numbers everywhere. We do have numbers here, of course, right? So the, the components of your first vector go in the second row. Components of your third vector go in the last row. In the top row are these basic unit vectors. Um, but what we do is we expand along the first row using the same sort of expansion rule that you do if you've done um, if you've done determinants in linear algebra. And so the first thing is that there are, there are these sort of these alternating signs that go across. So I, J, K. We go plus, minus, plus as we go from left to right across the top. And the next thing that we do is for each of these entries, we kind of, you know, for say the I, we, we kind of we delete the, the two numbers that are below, and we look at the sort of two by two grid that's left over when we do that. Okay? And in that two by two grid, we do the same kind of subtraction, you know, multiply and subtract thing that we were doing before. It's going to be these, these numbers here. So what you do is you, you multiply diagonally, first going from sort of the top left to the bottom right, and that one comes with a plus sign. Okay. And then you go across the other diagonal, going this way, and that one comes with a minus sign. Okay. And so what that ends up looking like is we write it like this. We say, okay, so we have this i unit vector, so we write down the, the unit vector, and then we write down this product. V2, W3, and then minus V3, W2. Okay? So we write it down like that. All right. So then we come to the next one, um, J. Now, J has that minus sign. And so we, we put minus J. We put, and you know, write that minus sign down right away. And now, 
the numbers that go in here, we delete the two numbers that are below the j, and we kind of take the two other columns, the v1, w1, the v3, w3, and we do the same sort of cross multiplying. And I'm, I'm not going to draw all the arrows because it gets really messy, but now we're going to do v1 times w3, v1, w3, and then v3 times w1. Okay, times w1 uh, with, the, with the minus sign. Okay. And then finally, we get to k, the last one. And we do the same thing. So we, we kind of delete the numbers below the k. We keep the 2 by 2 grid that it's left once you get rid of those two numbers. Right? So we write down plus k. And then we do the same cross multiply and subtract, right? So v1 times w2, and then v2 times w1. Okay, and that turns out to be the same as this, right? Uh, the main difference is the minus sign there. If you push the minus sign through, that's going to flip the order of these two, and then you'll see that it is the same as what we have there. Um, the textbook shows you another way to do it where you, you sort of copy the first two columns and you do a whole bunch of arrows going this way and a whole bunch of arrows going that way. And I mean, if you want to do it that way as well, it works. Um, the main reason that we, we don't necessarily push that method um, is that you know, we, we have a lot of students who are doing calculus and linear algebra at the same time, or they may be learning this for the first time in a linear algebra class. And there's a trick in the book that kind of gives you the cross product. And it will also work if you were actually doing an honest to God three by three determinant. Um, but in linear algebra, you have to do determinants of other sizes as well, four by four, five by five, whatever. And, and that trick that's in the book, it fails miserably for determinants of other sizes. Um, and we find it maybe it's, you know, it's in your best interest to not get in the habit of using it or you end up using it in places where you probably shouldn't. Um, we'll, do a, we'll do an example to see how this works and, and then you can decide for yourself which approach you like better.